Hi, so this is an exercise uh, using Audacity to uh, introduce you to all the tools that it has for editing and mixing. Not all the tools, but uh, some really good ones and ones that uh, eluded me for the longest time. But uh, I went through this exercise and made this exercise and it helped me a lot to understand. And I'm still getting used to it, but it's an awesome program. Uh, hopefully this helps you out as well. Uh, the exercise I have is on my CyberDog website. This is for my students in uh, John McRae Secondary School. If you don't have this file, you can try it with just about anything. You'll get the idea of the techniques. For my students, uh, first you have to download the file, and a right mouse click on the link that I have here is going to get you the source file to start with. Once again, you could generate your own file if you wanted to. Uh, that would be fine, and you'll get the same idea. Uh, I'm now going to open that up in Audacity, and so the first thing you're going to learn with this, there's about 10 things you're going to learn out of this exercise, and the first is how to use import audio to get the audio into your project. So when you've downloaded it to a known location, you can take it, open it, and it will add it to whatever else is already in that project. And the next thing to learn is an awfully good one. Uh, noise removal inside of Audacity has gotten very good, so this is the second item. I intentionally recorded this sound sample, and this sound sample basically just counts down from 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. But I left lots of leading silence at the beginning, quite on purpose. Even silence in a room is still full of noise from the computer and the fans and everything else. You can highlight that using the Select tool. Just highlight a big chunk of silence, and then go to Effect, Noise Removal, and Get Noise Profile. That's going to teach Audacity what silence currently sounds like. Now, double-click the, the entire clip, and that selects everything. It's the same as Control-A inside the clip. Go back to Effect, Noise Removal, and this time I'm going to hit OK. Now, the settings are default. 24 is the noise reduction. Sensitivity is 0. Frequency smoothing 150, attack decay time 0.15, and noise is going to be removed. You can preview it, but I already know the results are going to be really, really good. It takes what should be silence and makes it absolutely silent, and does a great job of scrubbing it out of the voice samples as well. You'll have to try this for yourself, and it depends on your circumstances, but I found this to be very, very effective. The next trick I want to show here is how you can amplify what's left over. This is the good stuff. It's not very, very loud. The gain was fairly quiet on this. So highlighting it again, an effect called Amplify automatically calculates how much you can boost the decibels on this. I'll say OK, and it makes everything sound a little bit better. It normalizes the sound so that this clip will match other clips that you might have, including music and anything else. Next trick, uh, trimming. Uh, I have lots of leading blank that I can get rid of, and I can just highlight that, hit the Delete key, it goes away. And it adjusts and slides everything back. Delete, and it's gone. Uh, now the next trick is a really good one. I want to manipulate the individual sounds, and it took me a while to find this, and it seems really obvious now, but at the time I couldn't find it in the menu. I just wanted to, to take some sound and move it around a little bit. And I found that the answer is by selecting the clip, looking for Edit, and you'd think it might be copy-paste, but this works way better. Look for something called Clip Boundaries and something called Split. And Control i is the shortcut for it. It simply separates the sound sample into individual segments that can be individually selected. If I double-click this now, it'll select just the first part or the second part. But even more handy is this tool here. The Shift Time Shift tool allows me to take this and start moving these things around. And uh, that works really, really well. This is a single track still, and I'll show you in a second how we can split this into multiple tracks. But this starts us on the right way to edit sound and manipulate things, as though it was a word processor. It's a sound processor. Uh, the next trick with this is going to be uh, how to select and bounce things to a different track. Well, let's start with this. I'm going to double-click this track. And if I wanted to get it out of this track and put it on something else, on a new track uh, altogether, I could use Edit, Clip Boundaries, and Split New, or use Control-Alt-I. And choosing that, bounces whatever you've selected onto its own track. Now that gets really handy when you start taking these other segments, Control shift i and starting to bounce them where they belong. Control shift i You might leave little shards of things behind, but you can highlight those and get rid of them very quickly. Here's our next little conundrum. You'll notice these seem to be disappearing. Uh, they're not going away. They're just not on the screen anymore because we have so many clips that they're starting to get deeper and deeper into the window. So here's the next little trick for you. If you want to uh, resize the window to show you everything that you have, one of the first tricks is Control-F, 
uh, enlarges, zooms or zooms in or out, so it shows you all of the horizontal dimension that you have here. So this is the beginning and the end of my samples. And corresponding to that, Control shift f does the same thing vertically. So now I can see all the clips, and it just, it just makes them a little bit smaller. And you can do this individually. You can take any track and expand it so it's larger on the screen. And you'll also notice that when you do that, it exposes a couple of other sets of controls. The gain adjust, which I shouldn't have to use if I've normalized it. But it also gives me access to pan this to the left or the right. And this is going to come in handy a little bit later. Uh, so for now, I'm just going to keep on splitting these things. And it's not going to take too long to split these things through. I won't worry that I can't see it after a while, because I'll use Control shift f to put them all back on the screen. It's the last one. Easy. So there is my whole sequence. I now have 10 tracks. The challenge I put into this was to try to invert the order of this, and using time shift, this becomes pretty easy. If you are starting to get a little bit lost in this, and you wanted to keep track of what this was without having to play it each time, notice that each track has its own name, and you can click on that and rename it if you'd like. So this one I know has to be the number one. It's the very last one. This one has to be number two. And naturally labeling is a really good idea. It can make your projects a lot easier if you get into some complex numbers of tracks. Uh, if I continue with this, dead simple. It doesn't take me any time at all to invert the order of these because I did them in a fairly precise order to start out with. You can even have these, these uh, samples overlap a little bit. This is why you might want to have them in multiple tracks. If you, can, if you wanted to speed up the whole sequence, you can slide these things so that the samples overlap, gets rid of some of the delay between the words, and um, you can pace the tempo of the whole piece a little bit easier. So there I go from, well now I'm going from 1 to 10. I'm just going to name this so it keeps, it, keeps that in mind. The next trick I wanted to show you is how to mix these things down. Uh, clicking in the bottom left corner of a track selects the entire track. If I wanted to merge a number of tracks, I could hold down Control. Whoops, no, I guess I can't. I could hold down Shift. Aha, better yet. And in this case, I'm going to select all the even tracks. No, I'm not. This is 1, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. Oh, I must have gone to 11 on this. Oh, no, I went to 0. This, this one down here must be zero. Well, alternating it just as I did, it's going to put them all together. Whatever I've got here, I might have evens or odds. Now, to mix these things together, now that I've selected them, holding that shift key down, I'm going to go to Tracks, Mix and Render, and that basically takes those sequences and puts them all on the same track again. And I could do the same thing with, in this case, I'm not sure if it's odd or even, but it'll put them all together if I use Tracks, Mix and Render. Now I'm only dealing with two tracks, and they alternate back and forth. And now, if I wanted to, I could play with, say, the pan. I might have this, whatever this is, is going to be in the left ear. And this is going to be a little more to the right ear. And uh, I've just controlled this fairly well. But we're just about done for all the things that this will teach you. Last little trick is, okay, let's, um, let's export this as an MP3. And that's a pretty easy one to do. File, Export. I'm going to choose the proper format. You can choose a WAV or any of these other formats. In this case, this is going to be something I'm going to deliver over a web page, so I'm going to save it as an MP3. I can, under the options, change it to different quality levels, and I've chosen 256 kilobits. And I'm going to say, hmm, channel mode joint stereo versus stereo. I should look into that and figure out what that is. But I'm going to say OK and save it here as countdown, perhaps. Hit save. And it gives me the opportunity to put in the meta data, meta data as well. Say OK. And uh, I really don't need to see that warning anymore, so I'll turn it off. There, it's done. If I think I'm going to edit this project again, I'll save it as a project. That'll save the AUP, that's an Audacity project for a folder. And so I might save it in the same place, countdown AUP. Doing that will also save all sorts of garbagey files that are necessary for it to put it together, so it's fairly complex. If all I needed was a pretty good, decent quality uh, file to use again somewhere else, I may instead export it as a WAV. WAV file is fairly lossless, um, uh, absolutely lossless, I think. And um, it may be all that I need. Now, I've already got one called version 1, so, you know, good habits would be this is going to be called version 2 mixed, just so I can keep track of it and save. Hope that helps. That's a lot of stuff in a short period of time, but you just learned 10 things about Audacity.
Good luck. See what you can do.